there's so many containers and how people are using it for stores, for homes. Well, here in the studio, there are two people who are actually doing that. They take these containers and they turn them into beautiful homes. So they're closer to me. I have Grace Atieno at the Ambo. She is an interior designer. And on my far end, Kelvin Chaleng. He is a senior architect and uh, one of the directors for Director Containers Kenya. It's so good to have you guys here. You're doing something that is so being done in South Africa and you're doing it here in Kenya. But to be specific, you guys take these containers and I'll start with Kelvin. You take these containers and you turn them into homes? Basically, containers are very malleable in the loose sense of the word. Right. Um, they're very they're very strong structures. They're made of steel. Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, they probably stayed in the ocean for quite some time, that means, you know, they can stand with some elements, so to speak. Now, container housing is not a very new, very new concept. It's not? It's not. It's been around for quite some time okay. elsewhere, but in this shows maybe it's probably a bit new. It's relatively new here. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we've done this for the more than five years, five to six years, I can say. So basically what we do with containers, uh, we try to convert them into livable space. Okay. You know, it's a new concept. It's a very exciting concept, I can say. We, we, we're basically offering alternatives into, I mean, uh, of housing. Uh, traditionally, we are very rigid uh, society, I can say. It's not just a Kenyan problem, it's a African problem, I can say that. And everywhere, guys are afraid of change. But we're trying to tell people, containers, we can use containers for more than transportation of goods and, and, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. importation and stuff like that. So take me through this, yeah. okay? Step by step, you get a container. What do you do with it then? So how do you go about, do you, just take me through it, it's a very interesting. So with containers, it's true, it's very interesting and very exciting as well. <laughs> we, we have so much fun doing, doing that ourselves. Right. So the first, the, first, uh, the first step, of course, is the design. One, we need, the customer, we need to know what the customer needs. Mm -hmm. uh, we do offices, we do shops, stalls. I'm sure you've seen them on the, on the, by the broadsides. Yes. Uh, we do houses, we do classrooms, we do storage units. You know, you can do a, with a ablation units, you can convert a container into pretty much anything you want. Okay. You know, so the first step is the client comes to us, they tell us what they want, right? Maybe you want a house, a two bedroom house, three bedroom house, a one bedroom house, depending on uh, one, your budget and the size of land you, you have. Now, you see to the interior, uh, the design team, Chris is one of, one of uh, his head of the design team. So you go through the process of designing. This is how I want my house look. This is how, how big I want my rooms to be. Mm -hmm. So once you have that, that's the basic, basic, the most basic, uh, you know, step. That's where you start the design, like with any other house, you know. Then you come. Now we 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 have a team of engineers as well. They help us with the structural, the construction and stuff like that. Right. And we'll come to the details of the structure. But let me rope, rope in Grace here. So here it is, you have a container. How different is it designing and uh, being an interior designer? How is it different designing an interior from your traditional normal house or space? Okay, so for containers, you're restricted to an 8 feet width. Mm -hmm. Normally, you have a 20 foot and a 40 foot. 20 foot is 20 foot by 8. 40 foot is 40 foot by 8. So you're restricted to the 8 feet width. Somehow you need to make that work, unless you're draining two containers. But even if you're draining two containers, you can't cut so much. You will be messing with the structure of the container if you're cutting so much. So uh, having specialized in the tiny spaces area, in terms of interior design, you get that uh, with a perfect design and uh, also if you include convertible furniture for tiny spaces, you can actually make it work. But now the challenge we have with containers is you need someone who has interest and expertise in designing a container home or a container space. Because normally you get an interior designer is able to design but can't work around the eight feet width. So it, it comes along with a lot of challenges, like mm -hmm. you'll get a normal bed, the most challenge is in the bedroom. You'll get a normal bed is about six feet mm -hmm. and you just have eight feet. So when, once you fit a bed, you have less than one and a half feet to, to use as a circulation path. So you have to design around that. That is a conversation we have with, uh, with our customers, we have with our clients and the rest of our design team.
on how to go about it. It's a challenge, yes, but we are figuring a way to go about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So, um, Kelvin, before I know you want to jump into this, but we're going to take a quick commercial break so that we will allow our viewers to also send in their questions and comments. Let's do that. Let's take a break. Then. Probably if you're watching at home, tweet us your questions that you have for Kelvin and Grace. They are in a very unique space where they're changing containers into homes. Tweet us at KTN News at Zinzi and Brown. Back to our conversation here on containers here in studio. It's quite interesting how containers are being changed and moved moved into homes and office spaces and other areas. Um, let me, uh, Grace, before we went yes. on break, you were explaining to me the different aspects and challenges that you have as an interior designer. Yes. Nevertheless, um, we began by saying this is not a new concept. It's been there, but somehow it's new here in it's Kenya. A, it's relatively new here. What are the challenges that you're facing perhaps with um, this unique um, 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 segment or within the real estate? I think the biggest challenge is... Uh, <laughs> also getting professionals in the field. But then again, uh, having to convince a client that container home is actually a good option. Mm -hmm. Like I can give you a story, some, some time last year, I had a client who came to the ad and uh, I was taking him through yeah. the containers and projects and all that. After taking him through, he said, uh, now, for him, he's comparing containers to Nyumba Mabati, which isn't really the case. Right. They're two different things, right. completely different. Right. So we have the challenge of convincing clients that container homes or co using a container is actually a good thing. Are most of your, I, well, I, I, this is a guess, are most of yes. your clients younger people because they're more open to the idea of I can have my office space in a container and still make it look amazing? It's actually between middle class to the older guys. Right. Mainly because they have traveled, they have seen uh, container homes. That's right. They are uh, embracing the, the whole idea. Youths are still trying and struggling to embrace container homes, mm -hmm. mainly because they have a notion that they need to build a very big house out of brick and mortar mm. and that's the achievement mm. which really isn't the case mm. yes all right so kelvin as an architect perhaps i would also love to hear your thoughts on this yeah. uh electricity water pipe uh, pipes for water how does one begin to um, perhaps put this in, into into play with a container house one i would say for us i've been done this for quite some time yeah it's almost second nature. It's mm -hmm. very natural for us. Those are the same questions here we get from clients, right? Mm -hmm. A client walks, walks into the yard. They want a container house. The biggest issue is how are we going to do the wiring? How are we going to do exactly. the plumbing, for example? Uh -huh. But the container comes. The container house comes complete with all that. We do the wiring. We do the plumbing. We even do civil works for some of the clients. We don't have guys to do. We get there. We get the team on how to prepare the ground, for example. Mm -hmm before we deliver the container. But it's, it's, it's I would say it's basic. Right. It's basic piping, basic piping, basic wiring, you mm -hmm. know. We also are working on a concept where we're going to do solar, solar powering, you know. We want to go green as well. Yes. It's a new concept we are still uh, working on. But we already have some clients who want the, the concept. Right. But we give, we give you a container house complete with its on, on solar power, you know, solar panels and batteries and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You can basically place it anywhere in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. and run on solar or that stuff and don't have to worry about repairing yeah, land yeah, yeah. okay all right so um, on break kelvin was sharing with me something interesting just like perhaps your house or your book where you need documents to show ownership it's the same thing with containers so kelvin demystify that for us i just can't go grab a container and say this is mine how do i go about that process you say there are certain documents that show yes, that yeah. um containers are containers just like any other property, another asset. Right. You need to have proof of ownership, right? Containers are now assets. It's an asset. Okay. Con a container is like your car. I mean, if you're converting to a house, it's an asset, right? Right. Yes. So you need, like with either, any other asset, if you go to buy a phone from a from a shop, mm. they give you a receipt mm. to show that it's actually your 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 phone. The same thing with with a container, like you do the car. Every container has its own logbook. So when you get a container, make sure you also have a logbook. Yes, yes. or uh, so-called, uh, in some quarters, it's called an interchange. Uh -huh. you know? Why is that important? This shows that all containers belong to the shipping lines, right? So if you buy a container from a shipping line, they need to show that they tr transferred the container from themselves mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. In this case, to us, because we are there with the retailers, right? Mm -hmm. So for every container that we purchase from the shipping lines, who are suppliers, basically, they give us a, uh, they give us a, 
uh, an interchange or a logbook. And where do I get this logbook from? The, con the shipping company? You actually get from us because uh, the shipping lanes actually have the interchanges with our name. Right. So on top of having the interchange, you get a sales agreement from us okay. to show that we have actually sold the container to you. Uh -huh. Without that, someone can come and claim the container, say it's theirs, when it actually isn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. actually, All right. We've had, uh, we've had cases where so guys have, um, have been duped into buying uh, stolen containers because one they're getting, they think they're getting Cheap. better deals because mm -hmm. they're much cheaper. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, one, every container is tracked, you know, just like, the, like with a car. And you need to prove beyond doubt that the container actually belongs to you. Mm -hmm. So if I come to you, you have a container and uh, you don't have document, doc documentation for it, all right, so we're getting a lot of your feedback and questions online, tweeting us at KTN News at Zinzi underscore K. Let me begin, Kelvin, with your own namesake, Kelvin. Sure. He has tweeted and he's asking two questions. One, what are the charges of a container? That depends. Uh, we have several uh, pricing price levels for different units. You EG, know. give us the one or two. For example, the, the guys want just empty containers. Yeah. Maybe to go and store their stuff. Yeah. We sell them for about uh, for between two hundred to two twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. That's for a twenty foot, 20 foot container, mm -hmm. depending on the on the quality of the container. Right. You know, for forty foot containers, we sell for between three twenty to even three three forty contain uh, oh. three forty thousand. Sorry. Okay. Again, depending on the quality of the of the container. Okay. We have some really beat up containers. Mm -hmm. We have some relatively new containers, mm -hmm. so the price may range a bit. But but for a container that now been changed into a home or an office space, mm -hmm. that's a diff that's a different ball game. That's yes. a different ball game. Okay. Again, that price depends on uh depends on the want the kind of finishings you want you know Ooh. so great design would determine <laughs> we basically work with the clients yeah, with the basically client. work with the clients uh, budget mm -hmm. for example if you can afford a one million container house mm -hmm. there's no need for me to give you a 800 000 one you know okay so still kelvin his qu second question sure. for someone who is interested and can't afford the total amount at once is there a financing program in the picture i'm guessing perhaps he's asking about paying in installments yeah we have we have uh, arrangements with our clients mm -hmm. whereby we tell them if you can look if, not, if you cannot afford the container the at full, once the full container cost at once yeah you can pay in installments mm -hmm. but you only release the container to you once you've done the final payment wow you know it can be like a mortgage where i just can I, I that, pay that's for empty containers the that's for empty containers that's for empty containers yes Ooh. now for containers that have been uh, fabricated or converted into converted into into housing units maybe right. shops or whatever right we allow installments mm -hmm. you know you pay this much you start the work pay this much but again even before the container leaves our yard because you don't want to run up a customer yeah. and we lost, we lost money like that. We, yeah. we, we've had learned the, the, the hard way. Right. So you say. Okay. So Jamo and perhaps um, Grace as yes. the designer, interior designer, you can help mm. us understand this one. Um, he's asking, can you guys do a swimming pool from about 20 feet container and the cost if and the cost of that? So for him, it's about changing a, a container into yes. a swimming pool. I mean, wow, this is mind-blowing. <laughs> okay. It's actually a need we are starting to get. Of we, having containers into swimming pools. Yes, yeah. we, we're having clients who want us to embrace that market. We haven't really tried it yet, but we're working towards it. Maybe once we do it, we'll have a, a showcase of some, a of, piece of, yeah, for you know, them to actually see. The cost but as at the moment, we haven't really started doing it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, that's, very, that's quite but interesting. It's doable. It's, it's very, actually very doable. doable. But I haven't seen swimming pools. I've seen the homes. I've seen, and yeah. is it safe? It is. Yeah, it's just it a is. container. A container is a very, it's a very strong structure. And in terms of diving, because you see, then again, the space is limited. You know, that you have depends. nine feet height. A, yeah. A container, for, a for example, a twenty-foot container is eight point six foot high. So depending on the depth of the container, maybe it's, if it's a swimming pool, mm -hmm. depending on the, on the depth the customer wants, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you can't just cut it up up there to retain most of, of, of its structure. Mm -hmm. But based on the research, because I've done a little bit of research on the scene, mm -hmm. you have people who feel the nine feet depth is too much. Mm. So you can reduce the container actually. It's too to, much for a swimming pool. Yes, it's too deep. Wow. So you can actually reduce the depth of the container by cutting the top mm -hmm. bit of it. Mm -hmm. But you have others who are okay with the nine feet. Mm -hmm. It's actually being done, mm -hmm. not in Kenya, but it's actually being done. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think at some point that Kenyans will fully embrace this new concept yes, of containers. Yes, actually at the moment it is. It is. People are actually embracing it. Uh, just to add on to what afford it in full. Yes. I have come up with a way of advising clients because I also do consultancy mm -hmm. on how to do it in bits. 
you don't have to buy everything at once and do everything at once when you get a professional you can actually have the professional guide you on what comes first what is very important first to the next step and the third step since you don't have a mortgage plan it's best if you work with someone who understands how these steps flow mm. so when you get a uh, professional interior designer they'll guide you from the design step which is the very important step in the whole thing mm. after the design now you based on how much you can afford they'll guide you on what comes first you'll have to deal with a number of things like heat until you can get money because uh, you can insulation actually insulation and padding covers the major bit of the whole quotation is that the most expensive part of it yes so you will start maybe by buying the containers have the containers at your place as you figure out what to do so when you're buying containers you work on your ground have the containers sit on the ground then gather your funds once you gather your funds you now move to the structure you, you move to cutting the containers, you move to frameworks, you move that's to right, doors, do windows that. and all that. But that's where UK is coming and help your clients yes. do that. So it's a process actually, I offer consultancy, it's a process I can take you through from the design step to the end, to the end results. If money is not an issue, how yes. long does such a process take? Uh, if you're joining two or more containers, that means some of the works you'll have to do on site. It will take about two months. Oh, wow. Yes, if you're joining two or three or four containers. But if it's just one container, 14 to 21 days, you're done. Okay, oh, oh, okay. That's like about a month. It's a month, actually. Okay. Then on yes. the structural, uh, the sort of bit of the container fabrication, yeah. most people worry that containers are, you know, very feeble structures. Mm -hmm. Even on top of the container strength on its own, because like I said, a container is a very strong structure. We also do steel strengthening on the inside. Still strengthening on the inside, yeah, yeah. okay. That's to add the strength and the, you know, the comfort and the durability of the container. Okay. Then like with any other house, any other house, like with the normal uh, stone house, you need to do regular, you know, repairs and touch-ups and maintenance. Yes. Maybe coats of paint and all that stuff. Okay. Just like you do with, with your normal house. Yes. Yeah. Kelvin, I'm, I'm also Grace mentioned the fact that you can attach two or three different containers. Yeah. You can have an entire house with different floors. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Now, like I said, talking about it, sounds very natural to me yeah you know? help me understand because i'm guessing are you stacking up container on top of a container yeah, yeah. Yes, we do we do that. so what we do basically what we, what determines the size of the size of the house is one what the customer wants right the guys on bangalos maybe you want to mention it for example i mention it with containers yeah mm -hmm. yeah just that's a thing it's a thing you okay. know so the thing is uh depending on what the customer wants that's the biggest guidance to what you're going to make for the customer, mm -hmm. what they really, really want. Secondly, their budget, like I said, mm -hmm. and their space of land. Mm -hmm. we, we've done, for big houses, for example, we need to join more than a single container. Mm -hmm. You know? Like she said, most of the work will be done from site now. The cutting, the cut-ups, and the strengthening, the welding up and stuff. You know? So we come to site, place the containers on the ground. Then, according to the design she did with you, being be the client, right? Now we do the cut-ups and all that stuff, and the strengthening, and the insulation, and mm -hmm. the wiring, and the plumbing, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically very doable. It's, it's very, very doable. doable. Chris, before yes. you jump in, um, still, does, you mentioned, you said before even coming with your budget, come with your plan. Does that mean that as the, the customer, I should have come up with an... A, a, what do we call it? A floor plan of how not I want the house to look not like? Not necessarily. Okay. The guys who come to us, we take them from the from the beginning from the get-go they tell you now because you, you have a design team because ah. you have a design team as well when you get a design team actually what i think he meant by that is every client knows what they want yeah every client has a picture of what they want so they come to you voice what they need and as a design team sit down with you we guide you through sometimes you might come with a plan that is not applicable in a container home mm -hmm. so we help you through because another thing that he might have forgotten to Cut up containers too much. Sometimes you also we need, when you choose the wrong containers, let's start from choosing the wrong containers. When you choose the wrong containers and then you have a poor design, you'll end up cutting the whole container. That affects the structure of the container, when the integrity of the container. When you say choose the wrong container, are yes. there types of containers? Yes, there are. You have high cube and low cube. You have 40 feet that has a channel on top. and.
others that don't have a channel. So when you're choosing a container, you actually need to understand the design first. How much are you going to cut? If you can avoid cutting so much, good for you. But if you can't, you need to know how much you're going to cut okay. and strengthen. exactly where you're going to strengthen. Because at, at the end of the day, when you strengthen so much, it be a container home being affordable because mm -hmm. you will need to buy a lot of metals and it is not just a one by one or a two by one at the end of the day are container homes um, more affordable than having to go buy a house that depends. but that depends and yes. don't you know, think at some point with popularity um, yeah. gaining momentum yes that at some point a stone house will be uh, uh, you find a container house more expensive on yes. the market compared to a stone house? Beauty do you foresee of, uh, that happening? Yes, but beauty of a container home is, uh, as I said, you can do it in stages. If you have the right person guiding you through, they'll actually design uh, a design that will you can able to convert it. Mm -hmm. If you... Beauty of containers is you can always convert it without actually affecting any other thing or the integrity of the foundation or, or that. So you can decide to have one floor, mm -hmm. then move to the other floor mm -hmm. and the third floor. Mm -hmm. But you need to have the right design so that when you're moving to the second floor, it does not affect the ground floor. All right, because of time, I'll let Kelvin have the last thing. Mm -hmm. Kelvin, perhaps as an architect, um, what's so different between designing a home, a traditional home uh, with stone vis-a-vis -a, -vis a container home? Uh, like she said from the beginning, uh, containers are very limited in terms of space you are working with. Right. A container is only eight foot wide, right? So now the thing is, for strength, because the thing is, you, you want your house to be durable and very safe and very strong, right? So the difference we have is, the, the only drama we have with containers is the space, because it's very restricting in terms of. Mm -hmm. So if you need, a, if you need a, house, a, big, a very big house, we need to join more than two containers. Mm. You know, that brings, brings on our challenge of designing and structural. Now that's where the real architecture comes in. Right. You know? Right. Uh, strengthening the containers, make sure it's, it, it, it is really going to withstand the elements, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. And of course, now we have the, the, the maintenance and all that stuff. Okay. But it's very, very doable. It's like I said, it's a very exciting concept. Right. And guys, you'll. No. Thank you guys for coming and helping us understand these whole containers. We just see them in Nairobi and a lot of them online, especially on Instagram, but this is a thing that is happening yes. in Kenya. Um, that was uh, Kelvin Cheleng. He's a senior architect as well as um, one of the directors for Contest. Kenya and Grace Atino, the Ambon interior designer, just helping us understand this whole new concept. It's not new, but here in Kenya, it is new of container spaces. This is where we close off the show. Thank you so much for your time here on Weekend Express. My name is Nzikibiku. I'll see you for a quick update of Fresh.